As we approach December, I thought it would be timely to have a look at a few of the more unusual Camellia sasanquas which grow here at Cahays. And we're now looking at Camellia sasanqua paradise blush, which was planted in uh, 2007, so it's made a really substantial bush. And you could easily get to grips with the blush bit because you see the pink flash on the bud and then the pink flash uh, around the edges of the flowers. And this, this has been in flower now for about, a, coming on for a fortnight. Quite a few flowers have shattered, but there are still more buds to come. And on a pleasant still day like today, you can just get a little, a little whiff of scent. Nothing very much. Now the Paradise series of Sasanqua camellias were all bred down in Australia uh, by Mr Cherry, um, who was a famous nurseryman and plantsman, all starting with the name Paradise. And they're all improvements on the old sing simple single Sasanquas. Perhaps they've lost a bit of scent in, in becoming doubles. But this is a really very pretty and attractive small camellia. Um, which would grace any garden. And this is Camellia sasanqua gay border and you don't have to look very hard to see where its name comes from. And today this is smelling absolutely gorgeous. When you look closely at the flower you, you th stop and think is this really terribly different from Sasanqua narumigata and the answer is yes that it probably is. The flower is a little bit bigger and it's got more pink in the petals. But there are several Camellia Sasanqua varieties. Um, another one is called Versicolor which is a smaller flower but with a similar combination of pink and white. But this plant has a, a very upright habit. It possibly makes its flowers a little bit difficult to see, but they're really very attractive and pretty on a late November day. Gay border. So this is another Sasanqua camellia with a slightly silly name. Um, it's probably a translation from the original Japanese, but Today this is called Sugar Dream and it's a really, uh, it's, it's a Sasanqua with the biggest centre of any, of any of them that we've looked at so far and it does have a very gentle smell, perhaps not as strong a smell as the last one we looked at but it is really quite an impressive camellia and I, I rather think it's probably my favourite Sasanqua. It's a gentle pink when it first comes out and it fades a bit as the anthers and stamens sort of spread out. Quite floriferous and still quite a lot of buds to come on this plant. And I really think this is a variety that when we can get it propagated in bulk, I really think it'll sell well because a flower of that size at this time of the year is something quite special. And this is a large flowered pure white Sasanqua with a fairly unpronounceable Japanese name, Setsugeka. And as you can see, it's a, a pure white, but a large flower, uh, which opens out flat when it's fully out. And it's really quite floriferous, not perhaps a, as upright a habit uh, as some of the others we've seen but it's still a vigorous variety which is going to make a large shrub in due course. And there's a certain frilliness about the outer petals which is attractive too as they as they open out. And I'm getting a, a whiff of the scent now, I'm slightly downwind of it and it's very fine indeed.
So the fifth camellia we're going to look at today is not actually a camellia sasanqua, although it's pretty much full out. And this is actually camellia cornish snow, and you can well see where it got its name from. And it was bred by my great-grandfather here at Cahays uh, in the 1920s, and it's actually a cross between two species of camellia, camellia cuspidata and camellia salionensis. And the Hillier's nursery did the same cross the other way round and produced a pink version which is called Winton, which is exactly the same. Now, in the garden here, there are lots of bushes of Camellia Cornish snow. And as you can see, this one got hit by a tree and it's shot again lower down, but it's never going to be quite the plant it was. But by no means all of them flower quite as early as this one. So there is clearly variation in the seedlings of Cornish snow and this particular plant um, flowers very much earlier than the others. Cornish snow is, is another of these camellias that goes on and on and on flowering and you can see there are many many buds still to come here so there's going to be quite a show here well into the new year. And the, the thing that um, gives away its parentage on Camellia Cornish snow is that the new growth has a very bronzy impact and that's where you see evidence of Camellia cuspidata, one of its parents. Camellia salionensis is a species that we've looked at in previous videos and we'll probably look at again. It was found by George Forrest in 1917 on Mount Petardii and it was that crossed with Camellia cuspidata that produce this beautiful Cornish snow. Cornish snow is a difficult one from cuttings. They're quite slow to get growing, quite slow to root, and they can damp off on you very easily in the nursery. Uh, they need to be kept pretty much on the dry side and not overwatered in the winter. But once you get them away, uh, they'll withstand a great deal of frost and are perfectly hardy in, in a normal southern UK garden.